Good afternoon everyone. Today I will talk a little bit uh, for different topic uh, which I also teach in my course in my environmental studies course here at IIT. It is about global warming and climate change. You know uh, this is a kind of a topic which every one of us is talking about. Everyone has an opinion uh, some in on right side some on the left side. And also very important too, you know, uh, the, if you if you talk to any environmental engineer, environmental scientist, or uh, climate scientist for across the globe, so they say this is the most critical issue which has come up uh, in terms of environment, in terms of survival of our whole humanity. Actually, uh, so uh, we will talk about that today. And in addition, more importantly, that if that is the issue that is existing, that what can we do and what is the realistic situation, you know. Uh, when we talk about global warming and climate change, then people say we should uh, plant tree, then uh, we should uh, go vegetarian, we should, uh, you know, uh, cycle, bike. Yeah, that is true, there are many options, but then we have to take a realistic uh, view that what actually is the situation, what is the extent of the problems, okay. So that is what I will try to cover that I will talk in this lecture today. What is global warming, uh, what is climate change and what is the solution, what are the potential solution for to solve this problem, okay. That is what we will talk today. So global warming, uh, it refers to the rise in global temperature near the earth, earth surface. What is global warming basically? It is basically saying that the temperature or the earth is warming, right, as simple as that. Then there is another term which is called climate change, then ultimately it is uh, it is understood or it is uh, many of uh, scientists believe that global warming actually is leading to the climate change. And global warming in itself represents only one aspect of climate change. For example, if the climate change happens, there are several consequences, several other things which will happen. But it is understood that this climate change is happening because of global warming. And what is climate change then? Then it means any major changes in temperature, precipitation or wind pattern and other effects that occurs in a, on a considerable amount, okay. That, is, that means they are major one, probably not the minor one. Do we believe, do we think that the climate change is happening? Of course, many of scientists believe so and you will know or if you start uh, searching what any kind of disasters happening, you will find that there are several of disasters happening. For example, extreme weather events, which is happening now more commonly as were happening, let us say 50 years ago or 100 years ago. And we have evidences which shows that the sea level has rise, the global temperature has rise in last 100 years, the oceans are warming, uh, the ice sheets and the snow covers are shrinking. There is a decline in the Arctic sea ice level. So these are a few of the evidences tells us that the climate change is happening. So as I mentioned, the, in the last 100 years or so, it is calculated uh, or it is known by some measurements that approximately 1.54 degree Fahrenheit temperature has increased. The average, if we talk about the average Earth's temperature, it is not uniform, it is not everywhere it will be same. In some places it may be high, it may be in other places it may be low. And you know it is very difficult to project what will happen in future because earth is a not a very simple model when we talk about projection, when we talk about modeling then we should have a system in which we use many assumptions, we simplified it. So to model an earth as a whole system is not so simple but nevertheless many of scientists believe that the temperature could increase as high as 11.5 degree Fahrenheit or it may be just 2 degree Fahrenheit. So it should be in between 2 to 11.5 degree Fahrenheit as per many of the models. It is not as simple as that understanding that okay if the temperature increase by 2 degree Fahrenheit I increase little bit of my air conditioner and I should be okay. Or it is just like yesterday it was 30 degree centigrade and then today is 31 degree centigrade. It is not like that. You know the small changes even in the temperature would lead huge change in the climate that may be potentially dangerous and it may lead to further. So think of this, think of this that in Rajasthan it starts having snowfall and if there is no rain in Mumbai in the month of June. So that are we prepared for both? Probably not, okay. So that is kind of thing that even it will be changes 
we need to think about changing our infrastructure, we need to think of changing our whole design of the buildings, how we live, how we deal with the different things. Okay? So it is not that simplified that oh, 1 degree Fahrenheit, I do not care, I just increase my AC a little bit and I should be okay. So that is not that simplified. So even a few, even half degree Fahrenheit change in average Earth's temperature would can lead to catastrophe. So that is more important than just thinking that it is just 1 degree Fahrenheit or even less than that. 99 percent, 97, you know, many of you may be thinking that, oh, I, I know that there was an article in newspaper, they say that this is an hoax story, there is no reality, there is no evidences of climate change happening, no of global warming. People, uh, scientists, 50 years ago said that actually the earth is cooling, now they are saying it is warming. But 97 percent of the climate scientists has agreed that the climate warming over the last 100 years are very likely due to human activity. That means whatever this climate change is happening, global warming is happening, this very likely is due to human activity. That means the human anthropogenic reasons are the reasons for ha happening this. And most of the leading scientific organizations worldwide, including many of science academies, have issued public statements endorsing the, this position that the climate change with global warming is happening. Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, they say that scientific evidence of warming of the climate system is unequivocal. That means we know that this global warming as climate change is happening. You see this, uh, this figure taken uh, from IPCC, it will uh, probably, it may not be that clear, but you can go to this climate change 2014 synthesis report. And in fact, it is a synthesis report, it, then there is a complete exhaustive report uh, published uh, in last year which tells you what is update on climate change. The IPCC keep on up updating the information available and the scientific knowledge available, the solution available upon climate change. So if you see, the average temperature on the Earth's surface is increasing and more so in last 100 years or so. And it is also showing that the average sea level has changed, sea level has uh, changed in last 100 years or so. They also have shown that the greenhouse gases, which is uh, carbon dioxide, which is NOx, which is methane and of course others also, they have been considerably increased in last 200 years or so, especially after the industrial era, after 1850 or, or and more so in after 1950. And it also shows this, the fourth graph, the graph D also shows that the most of these uh, greenhouse gases are coming from use of fossil fuels, use of other anthropogenic activities, a very few actually is coming from the land use, etc. and from the deforestation and other kind of activities. So that means there is a considerable increase in greenhouse gases uh, which are emitted by anthropogenic reasons, for example, from, from the combustion of or the burning of fossil fuels. And there is also increase in the sea level, there is also increase in the average Earth's temperature. If you see this, the greenhouse gases concentration, especially carbon dioxide, methane and nitroxide, they are the maximum in the last 800,000 years. That means it simply tells that, that in our atmosphere, these greenhouse gases, CO2, methane and nitrous oxide, they have achieved the maximum concentration which was never before even in last 800,000 years. So that means that these greenhouse gases are probably causing the global warming and it is written that extremely likely to have been with the dominant cause of the observed warming since the mid 20th century. In this kind of system, in this kind of uh, big model like earth, it is highly, it is very difficult to just say with 100 percent accuracy that okay, this is the only reason. But they say that it is extremely likely that this global warming is happening due to the greenhouse gases. So why do they think this, this is the case? Because if you see, understand the greenhouse gas effect or greenhouse effect, this is a known science that there is no much confusion understanding that what is a greenhouse effect. And this is a known science. And if you just take this uh, simplified uh, picture, it shows that the sun radiations, they come, they reach in the atmosphere and some of them are reflected back and remaining a good amount of them also are reflected by Earth's surface and half of them are actually absorbed by Earth. And a good amount of radiations are reflected, are radiated by the Earth and when these 
the radiations are coming in, they are mostly in the visible uh, radiation mode, that means their frequency is, uh, their wavelength is on the lower side, but when they are released, when they are radiated from the earth, their frequency, sorry, their wavelength is on the higher side, that means they are largely infrared radiations. So when these infrared radiation that reaches in the atmosphere, so these greenhouse gases along with clouds, etc., they part of these radiations are reflected in all directions. Some of them actually escape back to the atmosphere, but some one of them which are reflected actually first absorbed and then reflected or radiated back by the greenhouse gases, they come back and remain in the atmosphere and then lead to the earth's warming as well as maintaining the earth's temperature. So this science is known. The greenhouse effect, the greenhouse gases are known. Uh, in fact, you, many of the scientists have done experiments on this. So they are there for many years. Even in fact, you may be knowing the water vapor is a, uh, the biggest greenhouse gas. But what has happened is because of their increase, the impact has increased. If we do not have any greenhouse gas effect, if we do not have any greenhouse gases, we probably cannot live in on Earth. The, the Earth will simply will be just in on the ice ice age side. Okay, so this whatever temperature, whatever this nice temperature we are having uh, in many places, it is because of these greenhouse gases. The problem has arisen because of the increase in these um, greenhouse gases. Okay, so so this greenhouse gas effect is science is known, and then then if I when I show you the uh, when I have shown you the last slide, told that the, these emissions are increasing. So we know what is greenhouse gas effect and we also know that these, uh, these greenhouse gases have increased in the atmosphere. So that means it's probably the warming is happening because of this increase or the additional greenhouse gases. And most of these greenhouse gases, additional greenhouse gases actually are emitted because of the anthropogenic sources. So, so that's why most likely most of the scientists believe that the greenhouse gases are the cause of global warming and in fact it is. Uh, kind of a, uh, believed by most of scientists as I mentioned 97 percent of them. If the global warming is happening and if it is due to greenhouse gases, then the simple question is that how we can reduce those greenhouse gas emissions. So the, the technologies which can be used or can be used to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are actually called green technology. You may be reading now and then that every now and then we are now talking about technology which is called green technology or sometimes you will see that go green. Okay? So if you google green technology in your uh, google images that is what I have done, you will find this kind of picture, very interesting so many pictures, but there are few, uh, there are few things which is very clear, one is that it is a green color, everything is green and if you see most of them it is all it is also related to energy use, for example, it is about the wind generation, it is about the different kind of bulbs, etc. So that means when we talk about green technology, it simply is related to the energy. So we will talk about that why it is so. And if you try to identify what is the definition of green technology, it is actually any technology, any application of technology which reduces the greenhouse gas emissions, which probably reduces the use of natural reservoirs, which probably improve air and water quality. So in fact, this green technology can be seen in different perspective. In fact, you can call them actually environmental technology okay? or sometimes they are also called clean technology. So either you reduce greenhouse gas emissions, either you reduce pollution, either you reduce the use of natural resources. So anything will fall, any technology will fall under the green technology. So for example, if I start re doing recycling, if I treat water, I purify air, I use sewage treatment. All these technologies, environmental revitation, solid waste management, even in fact uh, renewable energy, energy conservation, etc., will fall under the concept of green technology. But for uh, with the perspective of global warming, the any technologies here we will discuss is with the perspective that which reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So we are defining here the technologies which are reducing greenhouse gas emissions. That is what we are considering for only for this class is the green technology. I start talking about uh, the, what are the different technologies and how and how much they can be implemented. Let me take a few questions so that you know we I just want to take your opinion. What do you think about global warming? Is it a true case or it's you believe in glo global warming or you don't believe in global warming? So let's uh, go to few colleges. So Silguri Institute of Technology. What do you think about global warming? Is is happening? Global warming, climate change is happening. 
Yes, sir, global warming is happening, sir. Okay, so you believe in And we are having warming? this adverse effect on us also, like uh, temperature rise and also uh, different kind of things which is happening all around the environment, sir. Who is there? Yes, sir, I do believe in global believe warming. Who believe that there is no global warming? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I just want to tell you about uh, whether global warming, I believe it or not. Uh, actually, global warming is a natural phenomenon. Actually, without global warming, also the temperature of the earth could not be uh, like this in the comfortable range. So we need global warming, but excessive carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases uh, causes some rise in temperature. So to some extent, extent civilization affecting the environment. That's my point is. But global warming is a natural phenomenon. It's been there for last, uh, from the inception of the earth, I think, according to me, okay. Thank you, sir. Development in the country. So, sir, can you please comment on that? So. I would say that you, it will have a huge impact and why do I believe that because you know many of I would say that a good amount of our, our uh, cities or good amount of our states are on the coastal region. So if the sea level and extreme weather events start happening of course the straight way will be affected okay. And global warming leads to extreme weather conditions in a country where uh, a good uh, large population is poor in under poverty which are you know there are these people who are who doesn't have good resources are they are more vulnerable to all this climate change etc so then you can think that many of us will be affected certainly so i would say that if you compare it with the developed country our country will be affected more i am not talking about individual country by country basis but because of our coastal areas because of our, you know, even in fact, if you see the, the a good part of India, it's already the temperature always remain high, okay. So then think of even increasing in temperature. But in that way, certainly yes, actually we are more vulnerable. All countries where population, many, a good amount of population is towards the lower income side, they certainly and highly will be affected by global warming vis-a-vis -vis climate change. Uh, so you believe in uh, global warming? That's my question to you, whole group. You think it's a real thing? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So you believe that global warming is happening? Okay. All right. Then, uh, then we go back to the slides. It looks that most of you agree, uh, which by the, by the way was not the case when I was teaching this to my students. They have different students have different opinion, but you know the most of the scientific. Uh, community in fact believes that global warming is happening due to greenhouse gases. So, you know, then the important question is that if greenhouse gases emissions are in increasing, then what to do? And then I told about green technologies and all these technologies, in fact, someone was just talking about the photovoltaic. In fact, any technology which we use and reduce greenhouse gases, it certainly would be called a green technology. So, the important one are solar energy be it be thermal power plants, be it be photovoltaic power plants, and then wind energy, nuclear, biomass, hydropower, geothermal energy, everything, in fact, even energy efficiency, those all technologies can be called green technology. Okay, so in fact, if, if we adopt all these technologies, they certainly are green technologies. Uh, there are questions to how to implement them. There are questions about the economics. For example, if I have to have solar, if I have to have wind, then it's like that the sun comes in the daytime, the wind blows when it has to blow. Okay, so then it's question that what will happen if the sun is not there or wind is not blowing? Then we, that means we need to have some kind of storage, energy storage systems along with that. Or you have to use it with something else, for example, with biomass, for example, with in connection with hydropower etc etc okay so for example uh, if i have a coal power plant it i can run i can get my energy for let's see 90% of the time if i have a solar power plant if i have to calculate uh, to to get the maximum energy that probably that will be 30% of time 40% of time similarly with the wind depending on where you are then another technology uh, is nuclear a good technology you can either love it or hate it because it has many positive things and it has also many concerns. You know, for example, about the radiation, about the nuclear waste, there are a lot of many concerns also, okay. So, uh, but the carbon footprint of this nuclear technologies are very low. 
and we will talk about that a little bit later. But at the same time, there are another environmental issues associated with that. Okay, hydropower, of course, it is a, it it has also very low carbon footprints. It has low or no CO2 emissions. But there have been concern that how this hydropower and then also the reservoirs and the whole ecosystem are in the surrounding area is affected by those hydropower. So that need to be seen on case to case basis. Okay, and you know you will see that across the globe uh, good amount of I would say a good hydropower actually is harnessed. So therefore there is no much scope in going further. I would say that it can increase in countries like India but probably in countries like US they already have harnessed the, the most of it. So there is because our energy demand is increasing but then we have this limited resources of hydropower etc. So we cannot expand that is another question. Then the, there is another technology which is called geothermal energy. Of course, geothermal energy is the extraction of heat from the earth's crust and then you know running it uh, to produce energy in, on someone on thermal, like the thermal power plants. That is also possible not in all countries, but uh, in a few countries for example, in India we do not have uh, many options if even if we have some option for example, uh, I think in Chhattisgarh they are attempting some but it has a very limited scope okay so that means doesn't mean that it will change the whole energy use scenario many people think and actually that's true also the biomass is also a, uh, has a very low carbon footprint so why it is so for example what happens if i grow biomass it in the presence of sunlight by photosynthesis it takes carbon from the atmosphere it takes co2 from the atmosphere and then the co2 is fixed in the, in terms of biomass and then I burn it or then I use it for energy production and then again it is converted into CO2. So if I am able to produce the amount of biomass, the amount of biomass equal to the amount of biomass I am using for biofuel or burning it for bioenergy, then this can be called carbon cycle because in terms of the net CO2 emission, it won't increase the net CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay, but then if we are using more but producing less, then slowly, slowly it will be then it won't be carbon neutral and then it in fact it will affect other ecosystems also okay so all these technologies actually can be called green uh, technologies and they will certainly reduce the greenhouse gases okay so that means we have to try for all these technologies so if i see the different gre greenhouse gas emissions from different fuels this if you see if i use lignite or if i use coal if i use want to produce one unit of electricity which actually is one kilowatt hours it will approximately produce one kilogram of co2 that means one kilogram of co2 will be emitted to the atmosphere if i use natural gas it is approximately 500 grams that means if i use coal power plant it will be approximately one kilogram but if i use natural gas power plant it will be half of the coal power plant if i use solar if i use biomass if i use nuclear if i use hydroelectric their greenhouse gas emissions, their life cycle greenhouse gas emission is I would say negligible as compared to coal etc. and it is very low. So if we want to reduce our greenhouse gases considerably, so we have to adopt for these technology and we have to get away from these technologies. Okay? However, if you see our uh, energy use, most of our energy across the globe is produced from oil, the green one is oil and then the natural gas and then the coal. So if you see up to here, I would say that 90 percent or so our energy across the globe in all form of energy is actually produced from fossil fuels, be it be natural gas, be it be coal or be it be oil. And very less let us say 2, 3, 4, I do not know how much but let us say 3, 4 percent is hydroelectric and the remaining biofuel is still very low. The scientist who has projected it further even the way it is happening, the solar, the wind, geothermal has will have a role to play in future but that is not that much because our energy demand is also increasing. So uh, if we do not have any uh, major changes in our policy, in our use, etc. Our 
energy production probably our energy use will still remain from the fossil fuels. Okay. This was this is about total energy. If I talk about electricity across the globe, you will see that it is again also from the fossil fuel, a good amount of course from nuclear and then the renewable. So, still our fossil fuels are playing major role and if I just project it further probably still they will play the major role. Okay. So, that means all these electricity types are fossil fuel based and they generate huge amount of greenhouse gases, be it coal, be it be lignite, be it be natural gas, be it be oil. But those who do not generate much, we are not using them much. So, in fact, we need to kind of shift the wheel, which probably is not so simple. You know, in fact, if thinking of that, that 80 percent of that probably coming from fossil fuel, if not let us say even less than that, but then switch everything with renewal and nuclear etcetera in in coming future will not be so easy. Okay. So, that means we still have a challenge that how we can reduce our greenhouse gases because of course, the renewal will play a role, but how fast they can play a role is need to be seen. Okay. So, and this is the global anthropogenic carbon emissions. Please remember that when we are talking about greenhouse gas emissions, we always calculate them in terms of the CO2 equivalent because greenhouse gases have different global warming potential. That means, for example, if I have methane, it is 21 times uh, more glo uh, globally potent, globally warming potent as compared to your CO2. Okay. So, we always calculate in terms of equivalent and sometimes we measure them in terms of CO2, sometimes we just measure in terms of the carbon emissions. So, here when I am talking about global anthropogenic emissions, it is basically carbon emissions. Okay. So, the total carbon emission as of today probably is 8 billion tons or 9 billion tons. Out of that 9 billion tons approximately 3.5 is coming from coal and approximately 3.5 is coming from petroleum, 1.5 or so is coming from natural gas and very less let us say less than 0.5 is coming from cement production, very little from gas flaring. So, that means if I talk about anthropogenic emissions and I want to reduce it, I have to tackle petroleum, I have to tackle coal and I have to tackle natural gas because they are contributing most of it. The remaining is pretty low actually. Okay, it is actually negligible, right. Of course, cement production has significant amount 0.5 billion tons of carbon. So, that means we have to tackle this, but as a matter of fact, because most of our energy is coming from these resources. So, it is kind of a difficult situation. We are in a difficult situation that how to deal with this. There is a one concept which is now tried in some places and then uh, is called carbon capture and storage. You must have heard or sometime it is called carbon capture and sequestration. So, I just leave you with this figure for a minute so that you uh, try to understand what it is, what is shown in a figure and then thus I will try to uh, explain it actually. Okay. So, please one minute please uh, understand, try to understand what it is shown in the figure. So, basically carbon capture and storage is a concept of uh, capturing CO2 from large point sources such as uh, coal power plants, such as uh, natural gas power plants, such as from the cement industries and sequestrating or putting it under the ground. So, when I say underground it is the thinking is something like similar to where what were the natural gas. You know so the natural gas is lying underground for thousand thousand of years if not more than that. That means, there is a choice, there is a possibility of even putting CO2 under the ground. That means, there is possibility that it will be placed, it can remain under the ground similar in the in the line of the CO in the natural gas. So, what do we do in this concept? Uh, we our large power plants for example, they are producing CO2, but those emissions which are coming out, they along with that they have another gases for example, nitrogen and remain a, a few uh, pollutants okay, and even sometime oxygen also. So, what we do is separate this CO2 from other flue gases coming for example, from coal power plant and then putting it underground. Okay. For example, if you see here putting it underground dig a well. So, what is the possibility that 
my power plant may be at x place, but where I can dig a well and put may be at different place. Why it is so? Because it is not that all formation, all kind of places I can store it, I can put it underground. It need to be a kind of formation which has a cap kind of rock which is impervious on the top of it and which has a kind of strata in which I can put it and probably then it should remain there. Okay. For example, if it is a gas field which is a depleted gas field already I have extracted CO2 out of it, I can put it there. And for example, there is an aquifer where it is not a fresh water aquifer, but the saline water aquifer and that is much below the earth, let us say 800 meter or 1000 meters below, I can put it there. So that is a concept, I capture it, transport it. So basically if I have to tr transport, you can understand what is the density of CO2, then it means if I have to transport it, it further away, I need to in fact compress it. So I capture it, I compress it and then I transport it to a place where I can put it underground, dig a well and put, uh, put it there. So that concept is called carbon capture and storage, you know, so what is the idea that we still can use fossil fuel based power plants, but at the same time instead of that CO2 going to the atmosphere, it is, we are putting it under the ground so that it is not leading to the global warming, okay, so because it is not increasing the concentration in the atmosphere. So this is uh, uh, another slide showing that how can we, so the first component is, the, for example, I mentioned the capture or separating. So how can we do that? So in fact, we have uh, some technologies available. So this is, for example, a power plant. We are burning coal in, in the air and then we produce flue gases, which is nitrogen, which is oxygen and CO2. So if I can use technology to separate that CO2 from other gases, I can compress it and store under the ground. Okay, so this is called post combustion. I, in fact, you we have adsorption as well as absorption based technologies which can be used. Actually, many of them are even available on a commercial scale, and then put it underground. Similarly, we have another technology which is called pre combustion. So, what is the concept? In instead of using doing the, the combustion directly, we gasify our fuel. For example, if you remember, I told yesterday that. I can gasify solid waste, I can even gasify the coal and once I gasify it is converted into carbon monoxide and hydrogen which is called synthetic gas. And that carbon monoxide and hydrogen is further converted into CO2 and hydrogen by using a water st uh, steam reforming, it is called steam reforming. In steam reforming we use steam and then we use carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide plus water it is converted into carbon dioxide and hydrogen. That means we already has hydrogen coming from synthetic fuel plus more hydrogen coming from uh, steam reforming. That hydrogen, you, uh, all of you know it, it is a fuel and then once we separate this hydrogen from CO2, we can again put CO2 under the ground and use this hydrogen for as a direct fuel or even for the generation of electricity or, or heat actually. Okay. So that is the second concept and third one is oxy fuel combustion instead of, so what happens is if I do combustion. For example, if I have a, uh, let us say very simple fuel like methane and if I do combustion, I produce, if it is CH4, it is converted in presence of oxygen into CO2 and, and H2O. But because if I am using air for combustion, which is used in most of our cases, it also produce, it has the flue gases nitrogen. So this whole nitrogen uh, is need to be removed here, but if I can just use oxygen for combustion instead of using air. So I will not have this, uh, this uh, nitrogen in my flue gases, I will have CO2 and I will have H2O which can be easily condensed and then this CO2 can be compressed or put it under the ground. Okay. Then even in some industrial processes we can use this, for example, you, will, you may be knowing that in many industries there is actually a separate steam of CO2 coming which otherwise is released to atmosphere if we can capture it and then we can sequester it. So if we do this carbon capture and storage, probably we can still use the fossil fuels, but at the same time the CO2 emissions, the greenhouse gas CO2 emissions, they will not go to the atmosphere. So that is the whole idea. That means still for some time, we buy time basically, we uh, use fossil fuel, but do not allow the greenhouse gases to go to the atmosphere. 
it is not that simple the, the, the way it looks like. It will have energy penalty, that means we need additional energy for compression, uh, for separation, even putting it underground. It will also cost a lot. That means for if I have to produce, if I, were, I was having a 500 megawatt electricity plant or a coal power plant, if I put a CO2 capture process on the that, CO2 capture along with compression, etc., the probability it will reduce my capacity of plant of up to a 400 megawatt or even less than that, maybe 350 megawatt. So what it means basically to produce same energy, I am using additional resources. Okay, so that is the kind of issue. It will increase the cost of electricity generation. That kind of concerns are there. There is also concern that, for example, if I put it underground, what will happen if it leaks? If it go to the atmosphere, then whole idea of you know whole this process is lost. So these kind of concerns are uh, are with the scientists. They are uh, working on that and trying to understand that what can be done. But uh, before I uh, go, I am seeing there are several people asking questions and uh, in fact, I also, also want to ask you a question. So when I go to your center, please answer this. So what can we do actually to reduce our greenhouse gases? What is your opinion on this? KMEA, no. Aluba, Kerala. Please ask your question. Does the con uh, concrete building affect the rise in temperature in atmosphere other than GS, greenhouse gas emission? Okay, and what is the other question? Uh, uh, the co carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere is always increasing per year. So, does the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere is re uh, increasing or decreasing or remain remaining the constant? So there is one more question also. By implementing the carbon credit for industries in India, can we reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from India? We are not implementing that. Because the in Western countries, especially in Germany, uh, they are implementing the carbon credit rating. Also, most of the uh, UN con developed countries, especially uh, all the European countries are, now, are on the path of implementation of carbon credit. Why in, we can't implement it in Very many good industries? Question. Okay, so the first question was that uh, concrete building is affecting the rise in temperature. I do not know, probably not. I do not know how it, it may be affecting the local temperature, etc. Cement production, yes. Cement production is increasing the greenhouse gas emissions. About the carbon credits. Yeah, so basically if you see that uh, it can be implemented uh, in India also, we were also part of the CDM mechanism. You see there should be incentives. There should be incentives given either by government or so. So far under the Kyoto protocol or the international agreement we have so far, we were not supposed to reduce our emissions. So if there is no incentive to reduce emissions, industries will not pay for that. But under the clean development mechanism under Kyoto protocols, there, was, there are many industries which reduces their carbon footprints and got carbon credits which were sold to the, to the European annex, I think annex one countries that was done. I forgot your second question actually. What was the second question? The carbon dioxide concentration in atmosphere is increasing. Yes. Uh, but does the CO2 per percentage of CO2 in atmosphere remaining the same? No. So, if it is increasing, it certainly is not remaining same. It is not the all concerned, all gases are increasing in the atmosphere. Okay. So, percentage wise also it is going up. So, uh, so, let me ask you a question then. How can you reduce the greenhouse gas emissions? By uh, implementing uh, green technologies and also the uh, especially solar, wind, biomass, hydropower and geothermal. Also, by also adopting the carbon, uh, highly uh, carbon crediting, the efficiency of uh, energy consumption in industries can be reduced. Very good, also, but how much of that is required and how much of that can be practically implemented? Any guess? Sir, I do not have any, no, no sir. Any other person no idea, who is sitting sir. there, any good idea if I want to reduce my uh, greenhouse gases of the country? No one. Okay, there is another station. Yeah, thank you. We go to some uh, one another college. Hindustan Institute of Technology. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I want to ask, answer your question. Yeah. Uh, where the carbon dioxide can be used? It is for the uh, growing of plants in greenhouses or organic culture and also the growth of algae in the oceans and carbon trading. Go ahead, go ahead. I am listening. Hello. So these ways the carbon dioxide used, uh, the sequestered carbon dioxide, I mean. And I want to ask also a question to you. Yeah. Can we use green manufacturing also, like you talked about the green technology 
in which you have uh, talked about only the production of uh, energy very good question in place of, course, of energy we want of course, uh, you, you if we have green manufacturing that certainly will also reduce emissions that is that is there but you see that green manufacturing also means the use of green energy there right because many of our industries basically use a tremendous amount of electricity. So, if we are producing electricity from green technology based sources, eventually it means that we are doing the green manufacturing. Very good question. Yeah, of course, we can do it in the industries also. Uh, there is one more question I would like to ask you, sir. Uh, though it is not a technical question, but still, uh, can you throw some light on like it is more of a political angle on the global warming rather than actually we are worrying about the yes that is happening there? I should not say it is just a political thing, but it is also a concern for different countries that how to do, how to deal with. Because you see this problem of greenhouse gases is a global problem, right? So it is not like I do it, but then some other does not do it, then it does not help, okay? So that means we need a consensus across the globe. So to get that consensus, there are several issues. One is of course economy. If you ask some country that reduce your coal power plants, do not use coal power plants. That means you are saying that do not use this kind of energy, that kind of energy that eventually will affect the economy. So to get the global consensus is not so easy. So in that sense, it is a political issue also. It is a, it's, you know, it, it will in fact change many things in across the countries if we take considerable steps to reduce emissions. But in fact, we also need to see that how many technologies are available. You know, it is not that simple that I say that all coal power plant will be reduced by wind, and wind or something like that. So that means that kind of scale of wind should be available and then the question comes about the cost of the electricity generation. And then whether if I increase the cost by two times or three times, whether it is affordable by individuals as households or also in affordable by industry. So it will change many things. So basically, it's not you know it's not so simple question. Okay, so it is little bit of political about having a global political consensus, and also because the political people across the globe are also they are right in a sense that because it will change the dynamics of the whole country. So it cannot say oh I just stop and reduce my emission by 90 percent. That won't happen in very simplest manner. Thank you very much. So, you know, the, the important point is that once we know that there is a problem, which is more or less agreed by most of us, then the question comes that how to solve. Talking about a problem is, is fine, but talking about a problem forever is, is not a solution. Okay, so we will talk about that what kind of solution can we envision, what can be done, and we will also talk about that what are the consequences. Okay, for example, if I say that I stop using coal power plant how feasible it is, what it means. Okay, so there is uh, there are a couple of famous scientists in uh, Princeton universities, Professor uh, Robert Sokolo and Stephen Prekela. Uh, in fact, they wrote a research paper uh, in August 2004, and I think it was the name of the paper was Stabilization Basis Solving the Climate Problem for the Next 50 Years with current technologies. It was published in Science. Science is a very uh, renowned uh, journal, actually one of the best journal in academics. So they wrote a research paper and based on that uh, there are several presentations made, there are several in fact games made, several presentations even by put by, uh, by the Princeton University on their website by carbon mitigation initi initiative in the Princeton universities. So the idea to show this to you is, you know, giving the sense that how much is enough, what is required. Is it just what growing a few more trees will it solve the problem because they can then we are talking about the natural sequestration or is it too much? What is actually required? So the a few slides, uh, next 10 or so slide which I am showing is by Carbon Mitigation Initiative by Princeton University which I should, uh, would like to thank them. And just to give you perspective that what kind of solution we can think of, okay? So if you see the emissions, the carbon emissions, again I am talking here about carbon, carbon, not about carbon dioxide. So approximately we are emitting 8 billion tons of carbon every year. 
okay and if you see in the last in the historically it is increasing for last uh, 50 or even 58 or 60 years if we keep on doing what we are doing which is called business as usual not thinking much on changing drastically what our energy use etc and thinking our economy growth not individual indian economy but a global economy the people becoming richer etc affordability of many things is happening our total emissions in next 50 years or so will be almost uh, double from what is today so that means we are emitting 8 billion tons of carbon today we will emit approximately 16 billion tons of carbon every year in let's say in 2060 or so so that means if we follow the current path we will have will reach here in next 50 years in terms of our co2 emissions so if we follow this path the concentration of co2 in the atmosphere will be 850 ppm that is an easy target and then after 50 years the technology will be developed further then we think of what to do and that is the easiest step because we do not have to shift, we do not have to challenge ourselves much, we do not have to challenge our energies, the way of energy use much. But if we think that we decide from today onwards that we do not allow our greenhouse gases to increase further, that means what we are emitting today we just keep on emitting that but at the same time our energy use will increase so that means there is a deficit there is a complete this triangle these amount of emission need to be reduced because certainly our total energy use will increase further okay so if we can take this path which is called flat path do not allow the emissions to increase further whatever we are emitting today just emit that and after 50 years it doesn't mean that our greenhouse that there won't be any global warming or climate change we still have to take further critical steps after 50 years or so and if we do so then maybe in, in 2070 or so our emissions our CO2 concentration in the atmosphere will be approximately 500 ppm which many of scientists think that we should target one you know many of scientists already think that whatever emissions whatever already we have emitted certainly this global warming will happen but what is acceptable the acceptable they say that we should try to make sure that it does not increase by 1 or 2 degrees centigrade. So by doing this, by taking this flat path and then reducing the emissions further, we probably will can stabilize greenhouse CO2 in the atmosphere in the range of 500 ppm or so. That should be acceptable in many ways. Okay, so that means if I just want to take this path, I have to reduce this much of additional CO2. Otherwise, they will happen. So. Uh, this, these two scientists they divided this into eight wedges of each of one unit height that means there are eight wedges which we need to uh, to find solution for. So when I say one wedge it basically means the here one gigaton carbon and the time frame is 50 years that means in one wedge I have to reduce 25 gigatons of carbon and in fact I need eight wedges of like that that means it is approximately 200 gigatons of carbon I need to reduce in next 50 years so that I am here I am on the flat path so that means this, all these additional 200 gigatons of carbon need to be reduced in future okay in next 50 years. So the question is how can we do that okay so uh, these eminent professors they uh, they give 15 wedge strategies or 15 solutions and they categorize into four categories one is called energy efficiency and conservation second was nuclear power third was renewal and bio storage and the fourth one was fossil fuel waste strategies that means they said there are at least 15 strategies available and remember we just need eight of out of them so that we will be just on the flat path we won't increase our co2 emissions in next 50 years or so so what are the different options for example in terms of efficiency if we can produce twice today's quantity of coal based electricity at 60 percent efficiency that means we almost double our coal power plants efficiency today our coal power plant efficiency on the average on across the globe is 32 percent so if we want to get one badge that means one triangle we just have to reduce it uh, we have to increase the efficiency to almost double so when i say the double it 
probably also include that we are uh, using doing cogeneration we are also producing some steam instead of and replacing the direct use of electricity the second option is double the fuel efficiency of the world's car that means if my car is traveling 8 kilometer in a liter in next 50 or so it should travel 16 kilometers in a liter which looks little bit of difficult either we have to switch to small cars or we need to increase the efficiency okay another another part of another flip of this is that if we just travel half what we are traveling today because what will happen the cars number of cars will increase so if we in reduce the half of our miles travel that means it actually has the same meaning as of increasing the efficiency so also use the best efficiency practices in all residential and commercial building that means wherever we are using air conditioning we are using heating systems we use the best practices available that means we use the most efficient systems that also can give us a wedge and that means across the globe just to put the perspective if we replace all of our incandescent bulbs across the globe you know what are incandescent bulbs are ordinary 10 rupees bulb which we, we were using for several years in fact we are now replacing them with cfls or even with the led lights it simply will give me one fourth of the wedge that means even by replacing all the bulbs across the globe it that won't even give me one wedge okay so that means it's a really a huge challenge it's not that it can be done simply in the simplified but it is possible because these technologies are available at some scale the another option is called fuel switching for example you as i mentioned that if i use coal power plants i produce approximately 1 kilogram of co2 for each unit of electricity generated but if i use natural gas it is 500 grams that means half of co2 emission as compared to the coal power plant so if i uh, switch uh, 1400 gigawatt of natural gas for 1400 gigawatt of coal power plant that means i have 1400 gigawatt of coal power plants in future and i replace them with, with this 1400 gigawatt of natural gas my i will get one wedge of uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction but what it means practically it practically means that i am doubling the natural gas use in next 50 years or so that means the question will come that how we can extract that much of additional increase on in natural gas or is it even available or not that kind of question need to be answered then the another solution they mentioned is carbon capture and storage as i mentioned what carbon capture and storage is if we can put carbon capture and storage on 800 gigawatt of coal electric plants or 1600 gigawatt of natural gas electric power plants or maybe produce synthetic fuel from 180 coal power plants or increase hydrogen plants by 10 times of today's capacity that is also will give us each uh, this of category will also give us one batch but as I mentioned that this carbon capture and storage is not commercialized that much I mean capturing of course but not in totality we do not have much experience we just have three major projects across the globe which actually are uh, capturing 1 million ton of CO2 uh, per year and by next 50 years or so we have to increase them by 3500 so that means we have to go from three plants to 3500 plants that's that's huge actually then the third category it says the nuclear energy we can if we can increase the nuclear production and the nuclear use nuclear electricity production capacity by three times in next 50 years but this is highly unlikely because you may be knowing that many of the, the countries in fact they are going away from nuclear you may be knowing that Japan has gone nuclear free Germany says they, they want to use in future and there are issues with the nuclear use in, in, in terms of the policy okay there are many countries saying that we won't use nuclear further so to find to understand that it will be three times of today's capacity it's going to be very difficult wind of course that is that is possible but we have to increase the wind capacity by 10 times in in next 50 years that will be too much but i personally think that is that is really doable the way the wind uh, production the wind electricity or the wind turbine we are increasing across the globe that should be doable but we have to increase it by 10 times in next 50 years similarly solar one we have to increase it by 100 times 
that means whatever solar electricity we are generating today we have to increase it by 100 times in future. So then question is what the cost how much it will cost but nevertheless the technology is available. Then as I mentioned what the biofuels reduce our use of the fossil fuels and re replace them by biofuels that is possible we will get one batch but we have to increase our ethanol production global ethanol production by 12 times okay. So that means we have to increase it 12 times if we are saying that we have to increase it by 12 times which basically means that we are seeking additional area either we replace the agricultural land which is uh, not a viable solution not practical or get additional area which I do not know where that area is and to grow that increase this ethanol production by 12 times which basically means have ethanol production from the area equivalent to the area or size of the our whole country our India. That need to be seen we do not have that much across the globe we do not have that additional area. So the practicality need to be seen. So what we are trying to, uh, to find here is that it is not so simple first of all and even if you see we need 8 wedges or so and even to get one wedge we need tremendous amount of additional area we need to increase wind power by 10 we need to increase solar by 100 we need to increase nuclear by 3 times we need to increase the efficiency by twice that is huge actually it is not only that we say that oh, we grow a few trees and you know I do not know a few small changes will not be enough actually that means they need to be a major change in policy major changes in the energy use that is required okay and then natural things many people talk about natural things that forestation afforestation can can help of course if we can grow new forest equivalent to the continental US that means if in the whole area equivalent to the US if we grow trees new forest that will just give us one wedge and remember we just need 8 wedges. So that means you know the forestation is good idea but it certainly will not just only forestation will not solve the problem. Another idea is eliminate all kind of tropical deforestation use uh, conservation tillage basically conservation you may be knowing what is conservation tillage it basically means that whenever your crop fruit is removed you do not uh, remove the scrap you keep the the residue of the crop inside the soil itself and it acts as a fertilizer it acts as a bio storage for the time being and that can be done but remember that only 10 percent of the global crop is produced from conservation tillage otherwise we do not use conservation tillage across the globe. So these kinds of solutions are there there will be a repercussion in terms of in terms of the cost there will be repercussion in terms of whether these technologies are available whether they are scalable but at in, in many incidents in at some way these technologies are there some but not commercialized or very highest level but either some are commercialized some are demonstrated or in that sense they are there. Uh, so this is the take home message I already have explained this basically it tells that you know we need to deploy low carbon energy technologies it, it has will have repercussion in terms of the cost it is doable but the scale need to be seen. So this is uh, my last slide uh, this is a very famous scientist uh, Gavin Skempt he just I am quoting him he said if you ask a scientist how much more CO2 do you think we should add to the atmosphere the answer is going to be none and all the rest is economics that means in fact we should not emit CO2 but the only the question is how can we do it that means it is a question of economics if you I, if I want to switch from coal or something else to a sophisticated technology some of them are really expensive so and the scaling there are issues regarding that okay so that is that is why he says that everything is all about economics okay. So with this I uh, stop my lecture uh, we will have 10 minutes for question and answers and interaction so we will go to few centers. Uh, sir regarding the carbon sequestration in deep underground strata so will it, uh, will it not be like uh, like storing something deep inside the strata that can sometime come back and like you know 
it will be like a huge explosion of carbon dioxide after a long period of time so that will be like an atomic bomb that we are storing somewhere inside the earth very good question won't be atomic bomb certainly but there are questions whether it can leak out or not but if you see that it will be it's not that i i store it under the ground and forget it it need to be monitored first of all it start with finding a suitable storage where it can be stored for a long time that it doesn't leak and after that once we store it we have to monitor it maybe of course for many many hundred years etc okay so the whole geology of the area need to be known to a very fine scale and after that we have to choose a few uh, very few uh, sites will be suitable for that and only then we can store it the question is whether it will leak out and the way you you are assuming most likely no because we if we find the right site we we keep on monitoring there are sophisticated sensors on that we keep on seeing whether the leakage has started or not there is no doubt that or there is a concern among the scientists that it can leak but that need to be monitored and in fact that can be controlled because the analogy is that even natural gas is stored under the ground right and it's not leading to something like a catastrophe it is there it is there it's not coming every day and we have to in fact extract it okay so that is my answer to this wales university tamil nad how to manage the greenhouse gases effect so what do you mean without by using managing greenhouse gases renewable resources that is without using non uh, renewable resources is there any other technique to yes. resolve this problem yes i mentioned about carbon capture and storage uh, is it possible to uh, remove the carbon dioxide uh, by any other method, uh, techniques well it is it's possible but the question is that how much it will cost and how much it can be scaled up so it is possible but there are certain challenges certain issues regarding that okay the best way is not to use fossil fuels at first place but that practically is not possible so then we have slowly slowly to build on on renewable slowly slowly build on other options carbon capture and storage could be one of them and we have to see how it comes up actually carbon dioxide having uh, uh, mo- uh, that is it is possible to sink in water right so is there any other method to uh, sink the ca- carbon dioxide uh, with water and forming any other any other gases or any there is uh, like yeah it can be dissolved in water the concentration will be really s- less because then it will re- lead to the saturation in there there are many ways of even converting into minerals etc the question is that how many minerals how much mineralization we can do you know it's little bit difficult but nevertheless we have all different possibilities we have to keep on trying that shanmuga college tamil nadu okay. how far the ipcc progress in climate change is used well ipcc has it's a basically a body it's a it's a body uh, which tells us what is the status of the different options what is the scientific options what are the technological options what is the scientist believe what the scientist think in fact they don't have to proceed it is that the government has to take steps into this okay the, the ipcc simply just tell that what is happening and what is the scientific knowledge what the many scientists think so it is that the decision need to be de- taken by the different governments any other question sir good afternoon sir sir professor nigil has included that um, footprint to you know sir so when we are practicing means we can get a feedback of that and how can we regulate all the things and all sir so is it possible yeah we can do that and we can use that certainly this is a exercise every one of us should do but and try to reduce our emissions but then it is for example if i am using ac in my home 24 hours but reduce it the use just by 1% or 2% that won't be sufficient so that means it's not that means the major bigger question need to be answered also okay so certainly we can should use those calculation footprints and try to reduce it and everyone start doing it so cumulatively it will 
bring some results, but there need to be taken major reforms, for example, how we produce energy, etc. Okay, so that certainly need to be done at higher level. Okay, thank you very much. SDM Institute. Sir, uh, greenhouse gases like uh, carbon dioxide that causes 60 percent greenhouse effect, right, sir? Yeah, so go ahead, go ahead, ask complete question. Sir, and uh, what about other gases like methane, uh, nitrous oxide, and uh, water vapors? So basically it's uh, water vapors which is a major greenhouse gas, little bit tricky to calculate it but they say that 50 to 60 percent of contribution even higher is from uh, water vapors itself. And then the one, second major one is carbon dioxide, then I think methane, NOx, chlorofluorocarbon, hydrochlorofluorocarbon. So the major one to tackle is CO2 and the major one is water vapors but there is not much we can do with it. Okay, so this, these are the few of major one. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, regarding this uh, global warming, yeah, uh, you have mentioned that 94 percent of that uh, particular uh, causes of global warming is due to the anthropogenic activity. We are having one uh, uh, movie, yeah, uh, name uh, Global Warming Swindle, yeah, which is against that particular thing. Can you uh, justify that particular thing, sir? It's very Do good we have question. any comment yeah. regarding that? So, in fact, you know, as I mentioned that there are 97 percent of the scientists which believe in global warming and there are 3 percent they are in the not agreement with the global warming and then they had made a movie like Swindle and there are other research papers also coming on that. But I personally believe that it is happening and they have enough evidences, enough measurements telling it that global warming is happening. Across the globe, we know that what is greenhouse gas effect, there is no denying about that. There is also known that greenhouse gases has increased its direct measurement because as I mentioned, there always will be an uncertainty a small degree of uncertainty because it is almost very complicated to understand the earth as in itself a whole model. Okay, so that kind of telling that this actually is leading directly it is almost difficult okay, so because it is a very complex phenomena. So there still are 3 percent or more or in that range scientists which think that global warming is not happening. But let me tell it in a very philosophical manner. So the philosophical manner is that what if I believe in it? and then starting having wind, starting using less resources for example, coal, for example, natural gas, what is the loss to me? Is there any loss or is there any gain? I just start using clean technologies if you see if I replace coal by let us say solar wind, etc. there actually are very much clean technologies, right? So is there any, any loss in doing that? Probably not. So it is true that we should understand science and most of us has agreed that there is a science behind that. But philosophically it is also a good idea just to reduce use of energy, use less energy, go away from power plants, for example, coal power plants are leading even in addition to greenhouse gas, other kind of pollutants too, right? So that is a better idea actually, having solar wind is very good idea. So yeah, so that kind of 3 percent is there. So I think we have to stop here. Thank you very much.